So ideally you watched the previous video about the Tesla business model and the future of programming in architecture where I gave you my slightly pessimistic view about the slow development of complex shaped architecture. And I explained how I'm exploring all the areas where um, programming can be effectively applied even if we continue to build boxes for the next hundred years. And then I ended the video with some suspense making you think that I'm either a jerk or more likely a very bad actor and a jokester. Anyway, the suspense is over and I will tell you my great idea and you will be very surprised to find out how predictable, not suspense worthy and worn out that idea maybe is. Not to mention that I gave it away in the title of the video already. So maybe, maybe, with a question mark directed toward you as well, we can use smart algorithms to create sustainable and cheap housing. Why do I think there is a shot there? Well, let us first agree that there is absolutely and utterly nothing new about this idea since the beginning of software development in architecture you had attempts to simulate the sun movement, calculate the shadows, calculate the illumination in closed spaces, temperature distribution, wind analysis using CFD calculations, you name it, it has been done and researched and a lot of it belongs to a standard toolkit of these giant software packages like Revit. So what is there left to do? Well, first thing we have to remember is that in the last hundred years there has been an enormous amount of attempts to make a perfect, sustainable, cheap, modular house. The idea is you design one ideal house and then just copy and paste it for everyone. Nowadays you even have ones that can be completely off-grid and powered only by renewable energy. And those houses are cheap, man. You can buy an awesome prefabricated house for 10,000 euros or 10,000 dollars. But people still pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for their houses. Why? I mean, that could be the end of architecture, right? At least the end of residential architecture. If we create a perfect module and just stack it, like in Minecraft, put the box wherever we want and combine it however we want, like a puzzle, that would be the cheapest solution as well, for sure. So why are we not doing it? I guess for the same reason we didn't create one single perfect suit that we are all going to wear, like many futuristic movies sometimes assume. We will. We like our houses to be expressions of our character, our culture, our identity, our values. And those things differ all around. Not to mention that we like to build our houses ourselves. So if all houses are different and occupied by different people and the Internet of Things is a part of your smart house where every appliance, every fridge and stove and a light bulb and a radiator are connected to the Internet and communicate between each other. And different sensors can pick up on which rooms you use more often and which not. And yeah, your house is oriented differently than some other and yours is maybe in Norway and mine is in New Zealand and yours has layers of concrete and styropor and mine is just a wooden log and you have a flat roof and I have a slanted roof with the solar cell tiles. All this enormous variation that makes our houses as unique as humans are, all that richness of choice creates a certain DNA of the house that does not need geometrical complexity to be complex enough. That DNA can profit from algorithms that can help you design and use the space efficiently. In the last video I made an argument that given enough time everything that you have to program now on your own will just become a part of a standard software package one day, probably. So the question is should you learn how to program if you're an architect? But with sustainable architecture I think there is a long way to go, especially when we combine it with the Internet of Things. Imagine developing a software that would combine all these different information like the geolocation of your house, different materials that you are considering to build with, then the price of those materials at the market where you are, the price of workers and machines. Calculate the long-term effect of different ways of isolation, your heating bills based on what material you choose or what ceiling height you have, etc. etc. There are so many variables that it seems to me that covering all those nearly infinite numbers of combinations is far from being a part of a standard toolkit. And when you include people's behavior, some, someone that works all day long and spends only evenings at home versus someone that works from home or someone that has five kids, all those factors can influence the shape of your house, the shapes of the rooms, the organization of spaces, materials of walls, roofs, ceilings, sizes of windows, every part of the building. And that is something that architects do now mainly intuitively because no one can consider all those options and optimize them in their head. But guess what? That's how I started working on my PhD actually. I asked myself if grid structures for complex forms cannot be optimized intuitively because the solution space is too large for us to process, then we need optimization algorithms. So maybe, maybe, 
I don't know what you will do, but I will definitely give this branch of thought a lot more water than before and see what new branches and leaves grow out of it. Maybe I'll be able to create something that will help you. Maybe I will get to inspire you and you get to create something that will change my life. Give me a chance to build a cheaper house, a house that respects its environment and respects me as a human being. I think there's a chance for developing complex artificial intelligence based algorithms for this purpose and in the next videos I will explain more technically which kinds of algorithms would be suitable for that. And I also personally feel the need to be able to design and live in a zero energy house that doesn't hurt the environment, that doesn't require me to go into a credit debt for the rest of my life but can cost up to $50,000 or $100,000 as it maximally should and a house that suits my character and my needs and I need an algorithm smarter than me to help me with that. Maybe I can make one, maybe you can. Remember what Horace Mann said, be ashamed to die until you have won some victory for humanity. So with that in mind, spread the word, share, support us on Patreon, stay free and get to work.